Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do a, kind of a tutorial on bench power supplies. You know, some of the basics, how to use them, how do you do uh, constant current. And uh, we're also going to, in the, in the same time, we're going to do a review of a low price, like an $85 or $90 uh, single output doctor meter power supply called a PS. 3010, which I assume refers to its rating of 30 volts and 10 amps, PS3010DF. And um, again, this is manufactured in China, low-end device. Of course, the user manual is totally useless. So I'm hoping um, this video can help you understand a little bit of how to use it. And there's a couple things you really need to know so you uh, you don't blow up your circuits. Um, it, it doesn't have some features that would be helpful uh, to help you protect your your circuit. So you need to, to know the procedure for using this so you, you don't do anything bad. Okay, so here's the uh, power supply we're going to look at. You can see it's a Dr. Meter DC power supply PS3010, which probably means 30 volts, 10 amps, DF. And um, it's a nice and sturdy device. It runs off, um, in this case, 120 volts AC. And you can switch it on the back to um, 240. Um, and you can see it's got a LCD display of the top one is volts. Let's turn this on. Top one is volts, middle is amps, and watts. Okay. So it's nice. It measures, it also measures watts coming out. It just calculates from the two. So, um, volts, amps, and watts. You can see down here, you can also provide a DC 5 volt, 2 amp USB for charging if you need that. But it's, it's a non adjustable 5 volts. Here we've got a, the big basic on off power switch, nice and sturdy. Uh, on this side, we've got four dials. They are for Voltage, two dials for voltage, and two dials for current, where you can set what voltage output and what current output. Now, the reason there are two is because there is a coarse adjustment and there's a fine adjustment. Honestly, these are very annoying. Um, there's a lot of slack. Um, you've got to bounce them around, and they're, they're really kind of annoying. Some power supplies, you can adjust each digit, but in this case, um, for example, you can adjust, it's like this, there's some delay between as you turn it, and you can adjust individually, it's not really individual digits, it's, it's really kind of annoying. So, um, you might want a power supply that's got individual digits, or, or, or you can even program in the numbers a lot nicer. So basically, voltage and amps. And then you've got lights for constant voltage when it's in constant voltage mode or constant current mode. And we'll talk about that in a bit as we talk about how it performs in the different modes. And you've got a lead here with the banana plugs and um, some alligator clips. Okay, so now what I've done is I have taken off these two um, screw terminals here. And you can see there is by default, a jumper between the negative and the ground. So why is there a jumper between negative and ground? So let me take this off, and I will measure. I've got my meter set to ohms. And here is the uh, three-prong power connector at the back. Again, this is 120 volts I'm using. And I'm going to measure ohms between this third prong and this ground. And you can see on the meter it's less, it's about 0.5 ohms. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that this terminal is connected to the ground in your home or your apartment, wherever you are. Um, this third prong in your, um, your power connector connects to the wall outlet and that wire goes through your house wiring and ultimately goes to the circuit breaker panel in your basement or wherever and from there it 
connects into the actual earth outside your home. There is a, um, uh, dug into the ground is a copper um, bar that is connected to this wire ultimately that gives a very low resistance, low impedance path to ground. So anything that is connected to this ground wire that's connected through your house to the ground outside your house, uh, large voltage can't be generated here because it's got a short circuit to ground. So we can also see that if I measure it between the third prong and I'm touching the case of the, um, of the power supply, you can see again, let me get that, it's um, about 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 ohms. So this middle terminal, this ground connection is connected to your earth ground inside your house and also to this case. And that's good because if you touch a metal case and it's, it doesn't have a low impedance, a low uh, uh, resistance path to ground, then it can build up high voltage and if you touch it, it can hurt you very badly. So it's good to automatically have this connected to ground and um, it, it's a protective measure that you could keep. Now, why do they have two? Well, if you want to uh, put this uh, power supply in series with another power supply, for example, this is a 30 volt power supply, if I put this in series with another 30 volt, I can get 60 volts, all right? As long as I connect these correctly. And generally, I'm going to put this ground in the middle between those two power supplies in series. So um, you have to be very careful about this ground wire. Sometimes you want this power supply to what they call float. And sometimes you want to, usually you want to have it connected to this ground that goes to your home and to the ground outside your house. So just be very careful about that. And that's what it's used for. And that's why they have this default to have this on here connected to ground. Okay, so let's start out by just powering this thing on and seeing what happens. So I'm hitting the main power switch. And you can see I've got nothing connected to the terminals. And I've got 28, almost 30 volts across these output terminals. Of course, no current flowing and no watts because there's no load connected. So you might think, well, hey, wait a minute. What if I had these terminals connected to my circuit and suddenly they're going to see almost 30 volts? Stuff is going to blow up, right? So that's the first, what I consider the biggest downside to this power supply. Um, whatever this is set to, when you turn it on, comes to the output. So you got to, you know, either make sure you got nothing connected here or you've got to make sure that before you turn it on, all of these dials are turned down as far to the left to zero as possible. Now, some power supplies, the higher end power supplies, have a separate power switch. So when you turn on the power supply, all it does is it applies power to these dials and everything so you can configure it and then hit the other power switch and that actually routes the voltage and current and power to these output terminals. So you can set it up first, then send the, the power out, as opposed to as soon as you turn it on, whatever these are set at goes to the output. So I suggest you consider, if you're going to get a power supply, get one that's got that second button that allows you to hold off until you've got everything set before it sends power out. Now, um, you might also notice, again, I've got all of these turned down to zero to the left. I've got a light on here, and that is the constant current light, which means I'm in constant current mode. Well, why is that? Well, what it's telling you is before you can set anything, you have to allow some current to come out, all right? Which means you have to slowly tweak this dial until it jumps over, you can see the light is on at constant voltage. So you've got to turn this on a little bit until you get into constant voltage mode. And at that point, you can turn on the voltage. You can apply voltage. And I'm turning on this course adjustment. I can crank it up to 
the maximum, which is 30 volts. So what that means now is I'm in constant voltage mode and I've got 30 volts applied across these terminals and I'm good to go. So now the next important thing to know is about these dials. So let me turn this on. I've turned all the dials to zero. Let me turn this on and again it says, hey, you're in constant current mode. You need to add some current if you want to adjust the voltage. So now I've jumped over to constant voltage mode. The position of the dials corresponds to a value. So right now my voltage is at zero because I'm far to the left. And if I crank it all the way to the right, I'm at almost 30. So right in the middle is 15. So whatever these dials are set at is the value they will get. They are absolute dials, all right? So if, for example, I leave them set like that, I had 16 volts, if I turn it on again, it's going back to 16 because this is set to 16 volts. There's nothing to tell you what it's set at. You've got to guess or you've got to preset it. But basically, I'm set at 16 volts. If I crank it down to 10, and again, these are kind of annoying because, um, for example, this, this um, fine adjustment is at minimum. So if I want to set it at 10, I have to go below 10 and then crank it up, and it's a bit of an annoyance. So anyway, let's have, um, now I've set the voltage at 10. These dials are in the 10 position. So if I turn it off, turn it back on, it goes back to 10. So they're absolute values. It's not like relative values. Okay, same thing with the current. If I short circuit this output and I make sure the current's set to zero, then what I can do is I can turn up the current setting and it will go up to 0.5 amps at this point. Or if I turn it higher, it will go up higher. So now we're at 1 amp. That amp setting, if I turn it off, turn it back on, will go back to 1.1. All right, so these are absolute uh, values for these dial settings. The position equals a value. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can set this for, say, constant current operation. So what I've done is I've taken the output of the power supply and I am basically running it as a short circuit through the ammeter. And you can see the ammeter is here set to amps DC and it goes up to 10 amps. And I'm going to, I'm basically short circuiting this through the meter and I'm going to measure current and see what happens. Now, as I said before, the first thing, you make sure all these are turned down to zero, and you turn it on, and of course everything's at zero. This says, hey, first thing you do, set some current, give me some amps. So I'm going to slowly crank this up, and right there, it goes to constant voltage. So now I can increase the voltage and see what happens. And we can see on the meter here if it matches the amps here. So I'm going to crank it up slowly. And you can see I've got 0.12 volts, uh, 0.8 amps, and 0.094 watts. So I'm going to keep cranking up the voltage. I'm cranking it up. Hey, wait a minute. There's no voltage. It's only up to 0.12. Well, that's very important. The reason is when we initially went, went from constant current and we slowly cranked this up, we stopped, without realizing it, we stopped at 0.79 amps for the uh, constant current setting. All right? What you need to know is these dials, the position of these dials are absolute. They, um, the, the position corresponds to a value, all right? It's not like it changes. It's always the same thing. So zero volts is zero. Maximum on this dial, maximum to the right, is 30, okay? And same with current. Totally to the left is zero amps. Totally turned to the right is 10 amps, all right? And um, it's less than one full turn to go full scale. It's maybe three quarters, a little bit more than three quarters of a turn to go full scale. So when we initially started it up 
and slowly crank this, we went to point, almost 0.8 amps without realizing it, all right? So that says it's going to limit the output to 0.8 amps or 0.78, all right? You can do whatever you want with the voltage. It's going to limit the output to 0.78. And that's why now it goes back to constant current says, okay, if you want to change something, you got to change the amps because no matter what you do with the voltage, it's going to be 0.78. Now, if we crank down the voltage, you can see we're going down, 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 down. And there we go. We're at 0.12 and 0.78. So the limit is 0.12 volts and 0.78 amps. Now, what that also tells you is that with... Um, this power supply output short circuited through these leads the total lead resistance is 0.12 divided by 0.78 which is about 0.15 ohms all right so it has to generate 0.12 volts in order to get the 0.78 amps that you set that you didn't realize you set okay so now what i've done is i've replaced my half ohm resistor with a 1k ohm resistor and let's say I want to push, I want to have constant current of 1 amp through that 1K ohm resistor, okay? So I make sure all of these are turned down to minimum, turn this on. Uh, constant current says I need to crank this up a little bit. And now I'm in constant voltage. And we can look at the amps here and also the amps on the meter and adjust the course value and it's going up to 10, 15, 20, so about 29 volts. And you can see I'm only drawing uh, 28 milliamps, but I want one amp through it. How come, well, maybe I can adjust it here, I can crank up, maybe I can, how come I can't get one amp? I want one amp through my uh, 1K ohm resistor. Well, if you do a little bit of math, you'll realize that one amp times 1K ohms is 1,000 volts. Eh, not going to work, all right? So don't think that constant current means you can get whatever current you want. You can get what the up to the rated voltage of the power supply. So this constant current is just a limit up to the capabilities of the power supply. All right. So you set a value between zero and 10 amps. And uh, if your load will allow that to flow, that 10 amps, then yeah, you can you can set a constant current. If not, you can. You're limited by the load. Okay, so now I've gone back to my half ohm 100 watt resistor, still measuring amps. This is off. I've got all these dials set to zero, and I'm going to turn it on, and everything goes zero, and constant current is saying, hey, hey, you got to set this first. So I will do constant current, but instead of like we did before, where we slowly crank this up until constant current goes off right about there, uh, we said these are absolute numbers. They correspond directly to values that we don't know what the values are. So we know that a full turn is going to be 10 amps, all right? So we've turned it to 10 amps, and here's zero. And somewhere in here, it's going to jump over to constant ver voltage. And that's about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 amps. All right? And we can see that by going here. Let's get this right at the point where it jumps. So, boom, right there. Now let's set the voltage, crank the voltage up. And you can see I'm going up to 0.3 volts. I can't go any higher which means that what I had set it at was 0.5 amps, all right? So this point right here on this course dial corresponds to 0.5 amps, all right? So let's go back 
and do something a little bit different. If we know that this is 0 to 10 amps, let's say, well, here's 0. So let's say right about here is 5 amps, all right? I'm not sure, but it's something like 5 amps, halfway to the maximum. So now it's telling me, okay, if you want 5 amps to flow, you need to set some voltage. Shut up, meter. So we're going to crank up the voltage a little bit. And you can see I've got 0.73 with 0.49 volts. And I can crank it up a bit, 2 amps, 2.6, 3 amps. 4 amps, and you can see the meter agrees, and we had only set it to 3.8, not 5, okay, because it's, it's maxing out at 3.8. So again, um, those, those, the point on the dial corresponds to an actual value, all right? So you got to keep that in mind. Um, and again, you're limited to 10 amps and 30 volts. Okay, so now you might be asking, well, how do I set the value of the constant current? The, the dial doesn't show a number, but we know that the position of the dial corresponds to a, an actual number. So how do we set the constant current value? Well, what you can do is you can take the output tie them together to short circuit the output. Make, again, make sure all these are off. Turn this on, all right? So you don't have your load connected. You've just got the alligator clips tied together. You've short circuited. So again, it says, hey, first thing you gotta do, set the constant current. So set it to a value. We're not sure what value. We just wait until, okay, so we've set it to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. Now we can crank this up a little bit. To apply a little bit of voltage. Turns out it was 0.78 or 0.77 we set it at. Okay, so it's good to know. Um, so we can crank this up. Now we go back to constant current mode. And if we want, say, one amp, we want this, this dial to be set at one amp, we got to play around with it a little bit. So we, let's go to the fine adjustment and turn it 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0.91. Okay, so now these dials are set at one amp constant current. All right, so if we leave them there, they will always be set at one amp constant current. Okay, so now that I've set the dials, the current dials for constant current at one amp, what I've done is I've reconnected my half ohm resistor across the output. And let's guess to see what happens when I turn this on. Wow, okay, so now I've got one amp that I had set previously, and it takes 0.58 volts, or almost 0.6 volts, to get um, one amp. And that kind of makes sense, since it's a 0.5 ohm uh, resistor, and you add another 0.1 ohms for lead resistance, that makes sense. 0.6 volts, 1 amp, and 0.6 watts, and we're all set. So now I'm operating on constant current mode. It's well within the ratings of the power supply, only 1 amp. It's rated for 10, and it only takes 0.6 volts to push that 1 amp. So now I can change that. Let's say I want to make it 2. So I can change this up to 2 amps, and you can see this is it's very sensitive. I've got 2 watts, and there I can bring it down to 2 amps. Now again, some power supplies will have, have uh, arrows where you can bounce between each digit and set those separately. This doesn't. It's a bit of an annoyance. but So now I've got 2 amps, and I can crank this voltage up. doesn't do anything, all right, because I'm limited to 2 amps. So that's pretty much how the constant current works. So again, some of the features that are missing on this, and it's kind of unfortunate, is um, there's no separate on-off where you can preset these values and then send it to the output. 
Um, also, there's no lock. Um, some power supplies have a lock feature where once you've set it, you can lock it. Uh, and there's other features where you can put the setting into memory, like we had on our function generator, signal generator. You can save stuff into memory, and so they're ready to go. So, um, and again, it doesn't have the individual digit adjustments. So again, be very careful when you turn this on, so that you don't, you know, you don't blow stuff up. And um, you might want to get a power supply that has a separate on-off feature. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we have our half uh, ohm resistor and everything's turned down to zero and we turn this on and let's say I set the uh, voltage to maximum. So I've cranked it all the way, presumably it's set at 30 volts and let's say I adjust the amps to see how much amps I can get out of this. So I'm cranking it, I'm getting 3 amps, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and you see it stops at 9.76 and 63 watts. I've got a 100 watt resistor, and it's only up to about 6 or 7 volts. So you can see I get not quite the 10 amps uh, at 30 volts. Okay, so that's about it for the... Um review and tutorial on power supplies. I hope that helped. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.